It's week 16 of the National Football League, and we'll see the versatile Debo Samuel. Always staying busy, he's your league leader in receiving yards. It's the 49ers and the Texans. All that and more coming up next on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the so-called Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. It is week 16 in the NFL, and we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the San Francisco 49ers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback and it will come out to the 25. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And it felt like you're watching the game tape. He got everyone involved last week. You he know? was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some. They threw it accurately. One touchdown pass. He didn't you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't put them in bad situations. Well, the numbers for Pierce last week, 20 carries, 107 yards, and the touchdown. 11 touchdowns on the ground this season, and the pride really extends throughout the entire offense. And in this case, I'm focusing on the offensive line. The leverage, the ability to get downfield, make that extra block in order to give him more space to run. They really look forward to him carrying the football because they're going to get him to the end zone. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. Down he goes. The 49ers get there. Nick Bosa make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DN. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest-paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. They need two. Here's third down. Throwing now is Stroud. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. They'll make that a second sack here on their first drive out defensively, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but they're, they're on pace for double-digit sacks at this point. But they're going to have to find a way to tamp that down, aren't they? So if you're the play caller, you're telling your quarterback, maybe some screens, maybe some draws, hard count, use your voice inflection a little bit, anything to try and slow that pressure down. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. This is taken at the 18. It's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a peek at the man under center. He has five full years in the league under his belt. Now in year number six. And he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year, but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. Purdy. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get that to Colby Parkinson. That'll bring up second down. Hey, look at the defense for these Texans. Against the pass, they've had some issues. Ranked number 23 in the NFL right now. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. First down. First and 10 at the 46 
Purdy will set up to throw it here. That's caught downfield by Kittle. And they move this all the way down to the nine. A big pickup of 38. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. The throwing here, Purdy. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. Brings us second and goal at the six-yard line. Purdy will look to throw again here. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. McCaffrey, and they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to bring up a fourth and goal. A gain of a yard. It's now fourth and goal. Purdy now to throw. And this throw will be intercepted. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. Well, Charles certainly circled that play. We might have to revisit it later. They had three in their back pocket. They go for it on fourth and goal and throw the pick. Well, you know, we're still in the first half. A bold call nonetheless. And I guess the book might have said, take the three. But it looks like they burned the book and just said, give me the analytics. And the analytics said, go, go for it. Go. Didn't work out. First and ten, it's Pierce. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. This defense for the Niners, they were excellent a week ago in the victory over Arizona. And the big difference in the ball game, their ability to force turnovers, three of them in fact. Being able to take the ball away, give it back to their offense, that's a... Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Greg Newsom. And the Niners are going to have it here just past the 25. And that's what we've seen from this defense all year long because they've been so good at finding ways to take the football away. And they just gave us another example right here. A strong defense. That's something you're going to need to rely on come playoff time. And this crew has got one. There's no doubt about that, Brandon. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Did a good job to get him to the ground quickly right there at the 36-yard line. Here comes third and about a foot. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 13 yards there and a Niner first. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea Slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. You see Purdy, he's going to shift him around. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Got a man, that's IU. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 38-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Here's Purdy on first and 10. He's got Ayuk once again. And he's going to get this inside the 30. We're scoreless after one. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The Niners at 13 and one now on the year. And they've been flawless these last couple months. Winners of nine in a row. And let's give them a ton of credit because in a league that's built on 
any given Sunday, any team can win. To run off this kind of a streak, this kind of a number, that's pretty darn impressive. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. That is caught. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 19 yards that time for number 19. Oh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hook up and set up a first and goal. And he's got it. Only a yard of the completion. It's second and goal. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the two now, second and goal. Back to throw, Purdy. Touchdown, 49ers! George Kittle with great touchdown, number 156. That ties it with Terrell Owens for fifth all-time. Let's post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Moody good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this one. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Now Stroud. Renfro bringing it in over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And Stroud now to throw. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Chase Young. Just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Well, that was their third sack of the ball game. Second in the league in sacks coming into this one. They're planning on making it a race to the top, aren't they? Absolutely. They're looking up at that top spot. But they might be looking down at the second spot pretty soon. It's a nice completion and a little bit of run after catch as well to carry the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Stroud looking to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Bishop. And he's got this down to the 35. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Stroud will look to throw once more. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. And the 49ers are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. So rare to see any quarterback toss back-to-back -back interceptions in the NFL, regardless of status or experience. Whether it's him personally or just the offensive game plan, I think this defense is reading something out there, and they're holding the upper hand. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Third and two. Out of the gun, Purdy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have the Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Wow. 
Shotgun now with Purdy. And returns it right back to Samuel. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Now Purdy. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. And well, they're going to have a first down and also right in the field goal range all the way down to the 15 here. That catch, by the way, number 10 of 99 for his career, one away from 1,100. Sounds like an IRS catch, uh, just, doesn't it? I was thinking the same thing, 10 yeah. 99. I just think I should be doing my tax. Touchdown! Debo Samuel, touchdown number 19 on the year. And the Niners will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Moody good with the extra point. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. They're certainly in need of some kind of points here before the end of the half. A field goal or something being shut out right now. They could really use some momentum before they head into halftime. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. He finds his man complete. It's Bishop. Touchdown, Houston. A great play there as the first half is winding down. And the Texans are on the board here in the final seconds of the first half. Aubrey good with a PAT. And that'll make our score 14-7. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. On first down, Purdy winds up and lets it go for Samuel. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Another throw on second down, and this one again complete as well. But they approach this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. And now this throw incomplete, and that is how this first half will come to an end. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Some critical games going on as teams fight for those final playoff berths. Let's get you around the NFL here in a busy week 16. We'll kick it off with a good one in the NFC West. LA heading north to take on Seattle. And those two are tied up as they play the second quarter. From there, let's head west to see what's going on with the Raiders at home in Las Vegas. And you can see, currently they trail in that ball game. Kenny Stills, a touchdown reception. Lastly, we're off to the Rocky Mountains, Denver, Colorado. See what's happening with the Broncos. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. The Broncos trying to hold on and claim victory. We saw a fine performance in the first half from the former Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead at the intermission. Both these teams running through their final adjustments before they head out for the second half. Time for us to go back to Levi Stadium as we'll hand it back over to Brandon God. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. 
And he returns this to the 22. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Here's second and 10. Purdy looking to throw. That's going to be caught by Samuel. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. His last catch was number 1100. This one, 1101. Puts him even with 2013 Hall of Famer Chris Carter. So it just tells you it doesn't matter whether you catch it with one hand, catch it with two hands. They count the save. And what a number he has put up in his career. He gave him seven yards on the play, and they do pick up the conversion on third down. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 25 yards there on the catch and run. Boy, he's moving right up the career leaderboard. Last catch tied him with Chris Carter. This one ties him with Hall of Famer Marvin Harrison. So can he go ahead and prepare his speech right now for whatever date he's want going the, to be inducted? Want the measurements for the jacket? Measurements for the jacket, what are the details for the weekend, how many people can he invite to the party? Because he's going to Canada. If anybody's listening, I'm a 38 regular. <laughs> Take it in. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. A throwing here, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Alou. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. Now second and five. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. But he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. You know, when this offense gets down here near the end zone, they're going to turn to their bell cow. And this guy's been a touchdown machine all year. Excellent job stopping him there on first down. And across the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown for the Christian McCaffrey with his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. And the Niners take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. The extra point try now for Moody. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to So that one a long 11-play drive. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. It was a small, magical spread to overcome. A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Here's now up the middle. Job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain as a matter of fact. And it leaves him at third and one. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he will have the first 
touchdown as they get him to the ground at the 37. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Play action. Stroud now. He finds his man complete. That's Bishop. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 36 yards on the play. When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's Stroud. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. Call that a very strong gain of 24. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Pierce. He is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. And a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. And they certainly aren't lighting up today, partner, because they've forced big turnovers already. And it's been incredibly tough for them to get yards against, let alone put points up on the board. They'll run for it with Pierce. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here in week 16. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. They start on the ground with McCaffrey, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And third and eight now. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing. The route running, competing for the football, just breaking down the defense. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. But normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think you continue to do so. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. Purdy will look to throw again here. Again, he'll find Samuel for the completion. And Debo going to have a Niners first down as the tackle made at the 31-yard line. Purdy now to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Niners passing game in sync now. They've got another first down. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive 
is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. And the 49ers are going to be set up with a first and goal as strong running gets him to the nine-yard line. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and minicamps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Purdy. This will be caught at about the five. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. So he stopped for no gain. And now what we have here, a third and goal. Here's Purdy. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Well, Brandon, we see why it's a team game there because there's a sigh of relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, that's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And now out comes Houston. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Ten yards on the It's second and inches at the 35-yard line. Throwing now is Stroud. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Okay, great. Stroud to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. Again, it's Drown. Got his man, Dell. Now second and four. Alert! Alert! Stroud looking to throw. Open man, that's Renfro. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 35. Now Stroud. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Stroud. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Stroud. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the 49ers are going to get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Texans scoop it. Well, I'm 
guessing that on the sidelines there might be a few words said about that mistake there, but I don't think it's going to hurt them in the long run. They're still going to get out of here with a win. Yeah, they got the, the two-score cushion, but you know what coaches say, Charles? Finish strong. Finish the game out the way it's supposed to be played. In fact, coaches might be secretly happy because of a chance to do a little extra coaching <laughs> next week. So Stroud and the Texans down by two touchdowns. A little over a minute and a half remaining. A nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. Stroud to throw it. Gets the dump off to Pierce. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting and they stopped him for a minimal game. Here's Stroud. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many players out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Hey, hey, it. check, 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 Here goes Stroud again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Yeah, he is going to have a Texans first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Bishop. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. And Stroud now to throw. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. A shotgun snap to Stroud. That is caught. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Here we go, Jack. Here's Stroud. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Diamador Lenore. And the Niners are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room. Throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, CD, for the losing side, they had opportunities in this one, but big plays just didn't go their way, especially late, and they have to suffer the L here. Certainly felt like that takeaway. Once it happened, it knocked the wind out of their sails, and they just couldn't get their equilibrium back. So for the 